folks, once again, it is indeed your boy Tim the Handsome Liberal. For you folks watching this on YouTube, understand it may be a couple days behind because this is never the, this is indeed uh, Trump related MAGA content, and YouTube is known to do a hell of a lot of censorship and banning. So it is your boy Tim the Handsome Liberal. Today we're going to talk about what you often hear coming from the right side of the aisle and sometimes the left side as well. Democratic cities. It is not uncommon to hear folks on the right suggest that democratic cities are ran poorly. A lot of crime in democratic cities, a lot of issues you often hear talking about homelessness in California, host of other cities on the West Coast. So it's not uncommon to hear folks talk about uh, the issues of democratic cities. So what we're going to be talking about is the differences between democratic cities versus Republican cities. Now, in terms of crime, there's no denying there's a hell of a lot of crime in democratic cities. But what does it take for crime to fester? Generally, we need a criminal. We need some form of an opportunity, something to do to commit the crime, whether it's stealing purses, catalytic converters, or taking out your neighbor's life. You need a opportunity to make the crime happen. And last but not least, you need a victim. So you need a criminal or an assailant. You need an opportunity and you need a victim. Where are you most likely to find those three items? Let's be clear, you need to be in an area most likely that is heavily populated. Simply put, if you're a criminal, there's going to be a hell of a lot more opportunities in a heavily populated area than an area with less people. If I like to steal catalytic converters and I'm on a farm, maybe I can get on Jezebel's few Cadillacs he got out in front. But if he's awake and alert, there's nobody else around that has a car. If you're in a major area, you can... You can take somebody's car on this block. Maybe if they're watching or paying attention or sitting on the porch, you can go down the street and mess with somebody else's. If they're paying attention, you can go around the block and there's always more opportunities to commit crimes. There are always more victims in metropolitan urban areas. So how did this tie into Democratic cities versus Republican cities? Well, let's look at the city layout in America. Top. 10 largest cities in this nation. New York, Los Angeles, Chicago, Houston, Phoenix, Philadelphia, San Antonio, San Diego, Jacksonville, Florida. Those are the top 10 largest cities in America. Out of the top 10 largest cities, you know how many of these cities have Republican mayors? We're talking about Democratic cities versus liberal cities. How many cities out of the top 10 largest have Republican mayors. Zero. There is zero Republican mayors out of the top 10 largest cities in this country. In fact, there's only one, talking about San Antonio, Texas, that is listed as an independent. All the other nine are Democrat. But we can expand this, folks. Top 50 largest cities in this country. The top 50 largest cities in this country. You know where the Republican mayors are in this? Number 15, Fort Worth, Texas, has a Republican mayor. 23, Oklahoma City. 35, Fresno. The 37th largest city in this country, Mesa, Arizona, has a Republican mayor. Omaha, Nebraska, 41. 43, Virginia Beach. 45, being Miami, Florida. 48, Tulsa, Oklahoma. 49, Bakersville, California. That's nine Republican mayors out of the top 50 largest cities in America. They only have nine. Now, there are four independents. I mentioned San Antonio, Honolulu, Hawaii, Las Vegas, Nevada, Colorado Springs, Colorado. All the rest are Democrat. That's 13 cities out of the top 50 that are not Democrat. All the rest of them. Literally all the rest of those cities in this country are Democrat. So when you talk about Democrat-ran cities have a hell of a lot of crime, and then you factor in where all the people are at 
it seems to make sense. But we have to ask this question. If the Democrats are running cities so poorly, why the hell do major cities continue voting Democrat election after election after election? We can talk about it reflects on the people. We can talk about the folks are not smart or they want free shit or whatever you want to throw in there. But we have to ask this question. What is it about the Republican Party that is disinteresting to big city voters? Why are no big cities or very few big cities interested in the Republican Party? What is that party doing to turn off big city voters? All right, we're going to go to the box as usual. You know how we run the program. It is MAGA friendly. Always is. Always will be. Liberals are welcome on the program as well. We don't block, ban, or censor anyone for their commentary. So understand when you do come in the box, you don't have to agree with the host. Nobody gives a damn if you agree with the host. You're entitled to your opinion. I'm not going to censor, limit you, or block you in any way, even if you disagree with the host. Nobody gives a damn. Looking in the comments, Amber says, we have smashing grabs all the time in California. That's the point we're suggesting, that for you to be a criminal, you need an assailant or a criminal, you need opportunity, and you need someone to victimize. Big cities have more of this. You're not going to vic you're not going to have a hell of a lot of opportunities to do smashing grabs in rural areas. There's just not a lot of shit to grab. So when we talk about crime in big cities, the number of opportunities in big cities is just infinitely higher. Going to the box. We we'll started out with freedom. How these cities began? We do have to ask a question. Good afternoon, Freedom Night. So Hello, I want to ask you, friend. Hey, good, good, good to have you back. So, is there something that is just being mismanaged in regards to democratic cities because there's more crime, or is it indeed because that's where all the people and opportunity are? Well, look at how strict they are on the gun policy. Wait, wait, say that again? You yeah, mean look how strike they are on their uh, two-way policy? Well, in regard, wait, let me, let me interrupt. In regards to the top largest, in regards to the top 50 cities in this country, or even the top 10, there's not a difficult time getting a firearm in most American cities. I mentioned New York, L.A., Chicago, Houston, Phoenix, Philadelphia, San Antonio, San Diego, Dallas, and Jacksonville. Those are the top 10 largest cities. You can get a gun in just about all of those cities now, including Chicago. So I don't get your point about uh, Second Amendment issues. Well, in the Democrat run cities, if you protect yourself, odds are you're going to be a uh, uh, labeled the criminal, not the guy trying to harm you. Okay, you said I'm I'm having a difficult time understanding. You said if you, what would get you labeled as a criminal again? If you defend yourself in like New York, odds are you're going to be prosecuted. For defending yourself, not the other way around. Yeah, I, I hear what you said. So you're saying if you use a firearm in self-defense in New York, you're likely to be ostracized or viewed as a criminal. However, I just gave you the top 10 largest cities. We can talk about the anti-gun sentiment in Chicago, New York, and Los Angeles. But all of those other cities that are on that list, Houston, Phoenix, Philadelphia, San Antonio, that's not true. That is simply not true. If you use a gun in San Antonio in self-defense, San Antonio, Texas, an FAFO type town, you're telling me they're going to ostracize you? I don't. I don't think that works very well. Well, not not there, and a lot of people uh, uh, like me. I I you to live in a big city. I moved out when I was 13 to a small town. So a lot of 
you know, conservative people are seeing what's going on in the big city and leaving for the small, quiet, like, town. Okay. I'm going to have to move it on, but I will answer your question on the other side. So why are conservatives, he was asking, why are conservatives moving away to small towns? Well, it certainly could be crime related. As we talked, just, just stated, most big cities are where the crime in America is likely to happen. As I stated earlier in the broadcast, to commit a crime, you need opportunities and you need victims. And there's just simply a hell of a lot more opportunities and available victims in a big city compared to smaller areas. So why are conservatives leaving the big city? Well, that also should be viewed from a standpoint of why do big cities not vote for conservatives? So it's possible that the conservative principles do not resonate well with heavily populated areas, which could lead heavily populated areas to not vote conservative and could lead conservatives to leave heavily populated areas. There is just something about big cities in America, particularly that do not vote conservative. I just gave you the top 50 cities in America out of the top 50 cities. Only nine towns are ran by Republican mayors. That means 41 cities in this country, the top 50, where all the damn people are. 41 cities are not ran by Republicans. The only nine out of the top 50, once again, Fort Worth, Texas, Oklahoma, uh, OKC, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, Fresno, California, Mesa, Arizona, Omaha, Nebraska, Virginia Beach, Virginia, Miami, Florida, Tulsa, Oklahoma, and Bakersfield, California. That's it. Nine towns out of the top 41. Now, there are four ran by mayors that identify as independents. San Antonio, Honolulu, Hawaii, Las Vegas, Nevada, and Colorado Springs. All the rest of them, outside of that 13, are ran by Democrats. What is it about the Republican Party that big city voters just do not seem to like if the big cities are ran so poorly by Democrats. Why is big cities having a hard ass time getting a, a Republican mayor? A lot of these cities have had nothing but Democrat after Democrat after Democrat. I'm born and raised in Chicago. I don't remember the last time Chicago had a Republican mayor. I don't even remember when that last was. Going back to the box, Betty in the comments, our grandmother says the grandma says the big cities represent all of us. So are we suggesting that conservatives do not represent the the population as a whole? Are we suggesting that conservatives only represent a small sect of the population? Going in in and I see Eon in the comments followed that up by saying too much diversity in big cities. So once again, is the conservative party? not a good party to represent diversity is that what you're saying going to the box for the great no welcome to the program what do you think do you believe the republican party is not in favor of diversity their policies don't represent diversity in my point of view and that's part of the issue like you kind of said uh, before I came up, people in the comments kind of share their sentiments that the diverse population of cities, you got to kind of touch everybody with a policy and some of their policies seem to be very narrow minded. Give me give me an example of a re republic. You say Republican Party policies are not good for diversity. Elaborate on that. Give me explain. What do you mean when you say re Republican Party in their policies do not fit diversity very well? Well, I mean, you know, in the cities, I'm from Indianapolis, so I'm like three hours down the way from you. Uh, so in my city, you know, there's a lot of crime, but there's also a lot of needs that it seems like the Republican Party doesn't want to support, you know, programs just for the homeless or for mothers that need help, uh, abortion, I mean, you know, trans issues. Uh, to your point, I think I've talked to you about this before, you know, in these small towns, you go rob a store, everybody know it was little Timmy 
June Buck's son or whatever the case was. <laughs> so when the cops come, you know, they probably slap him on the wrist like, hey, man, we told you about this. But in the cities, everybody is pretty much strangers. So there's no loyalty, no, there's no relationships of growing up with people besides the people you already know. So uh, that's the difference and that's the diversity I speak of. Mm -hmm. Mm. So, I mean, based on what you're saying, even though there's a lot of crime in big cities, hell, is it safe to, uh, safe to assume that big cities are going to continue voting Democrat? Yeah, until uh, someone on the other side has something that's outside of that box that's perceived or reality. I mean, that's that's the perception, at least where I'm from, you know, unless they tell us, no, that's not really what they mean and show us and vote that way. You know, we have something going on in my city right now between Hogsett and some guy named Shreve. Shreve was a Republican that, that you know, was for gun rights, abortion bans, but now he's trying to cut it back a little bit because he needs that city vote. Uh, but it's too late. Like, you're pandering at this point. You know what I mean? Mm. So. Now, Indianapolis, not even, I don't know, if it probably was on this top ten list. I'm sure your mirror is probably Democrat, correct? Yes. Yeah. Wow. That's, I mean, so, because you hear the Republicans saying Democrat cities are ran so, ran so, saying that, I mean, that's just no hope for Republicans in, in, in large cities at all at this point then. Well, I mean, unless someone changed, I mean, you know, I could be a little biased because I lean left, but it seems like we have more people with different ideas, you know what I mean? It just seems like there's always that vein down the middle on the red on the red side or Republican side that, you know, they're they're for, you know, uh core Christian values and in my opinion. And that's with a diverse pop population, core Christian values doesn't apply to everybody. You know what I mean? That's a good point. So in the comments, Debbie asked a question. Debbie Bradley asked, Wouldn't you want to try voting different to see if you get a different result for your cities? When you look at Democrats voting over and over again, or big cities voting over and over again for liberal mayors, what about the notion that maybe you should just try something else to get a, see if you'll get a different result? I, I'm, I'm, I think I'm a sensible person, but like I said, their, their issues always follow this core Christian values. And, you know, I don't personally have nothing against it, but I know neighbors, it's just too diverse. That That's not going to hit the bullseye on everybody in a city, you know. Like I said, abortion rights, we feel like that's a right. You know, you don't feel like that's a right, but you want us, you want to run our city. Like, you know, I can't say gun bans or whatever is the thing either, but I think most liberal cities or most cities want some kind of gun control because they're they're adversely affected by it more, you know. You know, you they bring up Chicago, and I'm like, do people know the history of Chicago? That, that, that place has been, <laughs> it's Sit been violent. Yeah, come on. <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, they always pull that out their bag. And I'm like, so now y'all care about Chicago and the violence? I mean, it's New York the same way, L.A. I mean, anywhere there was diversity, you're going to have crime because that's where all the money is at. Yeah. Bottom line. And that's what I, yeah, that's what I was saying. And I've brought that up before. <laughs> right now, you see particularly minorities committing crimes all over these major cities. They got video being ran on loops in, in Fox News and things like that, where a bunch of teens go into a Walgreens or a CVS, steal every damn thing off the shelf. But as you pointed out, crime has been in these cities from, from day one. Because I've mentioned how, what is the difference if you own a store and a bunch of minority teens come in there and steal every damn thing, or a mafia, one guy comes in and says, I want $10,000 every month out of your profits, or you're going to mysteriously have a fire. Getting robbed is getting robbed. And the mafia was robbing these businesses just a different way than it is now in these same cities, whether it's Chicago, whether you're not being able to get a real estate contract in New York, you couldn't open up a casino in Vegas without the mob giving you the okay. So these big cities have always had crime. It just happens to be minorities doing it right now. Well, you know, uh, you know, I think it was one of uh, Larry Hoover, speaking of uh, Chicago, one of his right-hand men said that, you know, the difference was the the other minorities was able to do their crime and send their kids to college. You know, they mm. would say, my, my son won't be a gangster. But we seem to perpetuate it in our communities because 
we never get a guy that can start a business from his illegal proceeds and carry on something that that could be, you know, keeping his next generation out the streets and out of trouble. So, I mean, yeah, it, it's just, it's ironic, but in the same time, it's very American, I guess. Yeah. Fair point. I don't think we disagree on much there. I appreciate you coming on for the great. Got to move it on. No problem, HL. You're one of my favorites, brother. <laughs> Oh, definitely. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Now, in the comments, when we were talking about that, when I was basically stating that, you know, crime and things like that has been happening, you know, since the beginning of time, I saw Nick Mayo and a few others in the comments like, so it's okay then? No, it's not okay. However, as what me and the last caller was alluding to is that it should, it's not okay, but it shouldn't be treated any differently. And that is the difference, whereas the mob is kind of glorified, whereas with these criminals that look like yours truly, for instance, is being demonized. But getting robbed is getting robbed. You don't think there were innocent shop owners losing their lives, losing their businesses, losing their life savings to what the mafia was doing as well? It was happening then it's the same way it is now. It was just viewed differently. It was treated with kid gloves compared to what's happening now. Particularly because unlike the thugs you see now on TV, the mafia was tied in with politicians, tied in with police a hell of a lot more. So they got a better outcome than say what's happening now. But for the victims, the results were the same. Al Capone was leaving bodies all over Chicago. The same shit was happening. This is not new. This is not something special. Yeah, Tim, appreciate the hat and mustache. But no, it is not okay by any means. Now, in regards to the comment, Timmy D982 said, well, the mob was more organized. I, if you're robbing people, you're robbing people. In fact, the mob may be more organized, but they were probably costing their, costing their urban areas, their residences, even more money. Because you got to think, all of Vegas was controlled by the mob. How many CVSs, Walgreens, Best Buys do you have to rob and loot to equal controlling Las Vegas or preventing folks from building skyscrapers in New York because you control all of the union workers and they can't even so much as pour cement. So even though the mob is more organized, they're also hurting the public more. You think that's not going to lead to you paying more in taxes when these people are draining so much out of the economy? Did not get the same treatment. Once again, not saying it is okay, just pointing out that he got treated a hell of a lot differently than what's happening now. A lot differently. Now, looking in the comments, the black gangs of Chicago were organized. Um, I grew up, Disciples, uh, GDs and BDs, Black Gangs of Disciples, Latin Kings. I don't think they were more organized than the mob. I just do not, because the mob... Get the mafia got a hell of a lot of assistance from top level politicians. For folks who are familiar with Chicago, Mayor Richard Daly, a long time mayor in Chicago, was allegedly, now I'll put emphasis on allegedly, but deeply associated with the mafia. The gangbangers in Chicago, they had connections, but it generally is going to be lower, lower class, like maybe connecting to an alderman, maybe some beat officers are on the payroll. Whereas the mafia is going to be working with the chief of police. They're going to be working with the governor and people further up on it. As one viewer pointed out, the mafia was more organized. And that allowed them to take more out of society than these low-level gangbangers and criminals. Also keep in mind, most of the crime being committed by the low-level folks is happening in their own neighborhoods. Whereas the mafia may have controlled the whole damn town. So it's a it's a big, big difference. Uh, looking in the comments, I see no Joe Biden supporters anywhere. <laughs> well, this is a program definitely friendly to MAGA. Liberals are welcome as well. So you may not have a lot of Biden supporters in the comments, but notice, note that they are welcome. Tap the screen, get your boy up to 15,000 likes. Got a smaller crowd, a little bit less than 400 of you in here right now. This is a profile, just decided to give this one some use today, but nevertheless, tap the screen, get your boy likes up, 15,000 would be kind of you, let your thumbs not be lazy, 
Uh, going back to the box, real quick in the comments, Chris says you never see Biden rallies. That is true. That is absolutely true. Biden does not have the same draw as Trump. In fact, Biden's biggest gift towards potentially getting reelected is President Trump. The only reason Biden was put in office is due to dislike of President Trump. So the bigger the Trump rallies are, the more frightened and concerned Biden voters become and the more likely they are to vote for President Biden. So for folks who are on the left, we're looking at folks on the right saying, please have more of those rallies. We want to see a few Auschwitz t-shirts, maybe toss in a few Confederate flags, say some really hateful shit. Feel free to admit you're a nationalist. It helps out the folks on the left. Nobody's happy about President Biden. We need that shit. We need to hear that you, you, you prefer to see a few immigrants lose their lives crossing the Rio Grande. We need to hear that if a woman is sexually assaulted, who gives a damn she's going to have that baby anyway? We are really in need of that because our leader is not attracting a hell of a lot of votes. So we do appreciate the size of the rallies. Going back to the box. Current thing advocate. <laughs> Current thing. Good afternoon. Welcome to the program. Good day. How you doing? Good day. Talking about democratic cities versus liberal cities. Top 50 cities in America, 30 plus are ran by Democrats. Almost 36 or something like that. I forgot my math. 37. 37 of the top 50 cities in America are ran by Democrats. Why do you think that is? Well, it has to go down with uh, the demographics of the city, the people who are in the city, the people who will vote the officials, and you would have to look at them. I think, and there's something you can definitely discern. I mean, Wait, 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 but you said, but you're saying demographics of the city. Is there a certain demographic that just votes Democrat? Well, yeah, for sure. Black people, 97, 99, or I think it's like 97 to 98 percent Democrat for the last 50 years, right? Why do you think that is? Oh, they got them good, man. I don't know. They're not doing any, they're not pushing any good policy for them. I mean, a lot of black people do seem to be waking up to the fact that it is like a scam, but... It's definitely not all the way there, right? Yeah, but even if, but you're talking, like, as you pointed out, 50 years of blacks voting for Democrats. You're telling me the Republicans could not figure out the formula over the last half of a century? Um, well, it's only 13% of the population, so I don't know if, like, you don't want to... Well, let's go with that. They're only 13% of the population. So is it? are you suggesting that because blacks represent such a small percentage of the population, they're not even concerned with the black vote at all? Uh, I mean, that's probably, like, I think they're not. So the, what, what they're not going to do is try to ostracize their own base, their own core, and change their own message, at least I hope. But even though you do see this today, even with Donald Trump, uh, like, you would like to keep it the core message and not pander to these people who don't share similar values with us, right? So when you say these people do not share similar values, elaborate on it. Give me an example. What do you mean by, well, first of all, who are the people and what are the values? Well, hmm. let me talk about this a lot. So I think a good example, we'll keep things current, uh, Montgomery, Alabama. You know, we can talk about whether, I know I'm not going to get into disputing and being like a investigative guy on the case you know sure they might have been vile racists and said some terrible things but the sentiment in the black community around that stuff i mean you see it here on tiktok all the time you'll probably see it in the comments right now is like you say and they they think it's justified to go and attack people just because of 100 years or 500 years of systematic racism slavery and all that stuff and they say you know the tables have turned now doesn't feel so good and it's like i just completely reject that whole ideology i'm not saying it's all black people but it is anytime you see like a white person go and commit some terrible atrocity it gets denounced across the board from the most extreme far-right dissident guy to you know neocon ted cruz he's gonna denounce it so it's, let, let, me, give you, let me give you an example when let's take january 6th where we saw 
police being beaten, pepper sprayed, and things like that. President Trump referred to that as a love fest. Do you see him as denouncing the acts that took place there that day? Well, I don't see that as a terrible atrocity. You see cops being pepper sprayed. That's not a terrible atrocity to you? Pepper spray? I mean, in the grand scheme of things, not really. So what is a terrible atrocity to you? Well, so in particular, like, you know, one, like the Christchurch shooting in Texas, that's an atrocity. So somebody um, has, to, so you can, you can pepper spray a police, but somebody has to essentially die before it becomes an atrocity? If I get pepper sprayed, I'm not going to say it was an atrocity, right? I mean, I'm just, this, you're the, talking this, this about doing this. To, so, wait, wait, we're wait. talking about, you're arguing semantics of the word atrocity means like, you know, when I think of historical atrocities throughout history, I think of, you know, the Russian revolution, Russians died, the Holocaust, tons of Jews well, died. Yeah, I get and your then, point. I get your point. It's and then, and point. then you go, well, what about pepper spraying? And I'm like, yeah, it just doesn't meet the bar. It's like, okay. you know, that's, that's a fair point. Like, that does suck. Yeah. But like, okay, I get your atrocity. point. It's, yeah, it's, it's, not an, it's not an atrocity, but you pointed out how folks are championing what happened in Montgomery, Alabama with the chair and, and justifying it. Now, obviously, that wasn't an atrocity either. Am I correct? It's not an atrocity, but, well, I don't know. I think if you, like, some old woman, like, gets WWE beat over the head with a chair for no reason, if that's what happened and it's on a racial bias because they were white, that's probably an atrocity. And the atrocity isn't the fact that it happened. I think the bigger fact is, is that people are championing it. And, you know, MSNBC, they're laughing about it. Well, what, People on TikTok, what is the saying, difference? This next that's that's, that's what I'm trying to find out. I'm trying to find out what is the difference between oh, celebrating sure. what happened in, in Montgomery, Alabama, and referring to January 6th as a love fest. I want you to explain to me what's the difference oh, in sure. celebrating one as opposed to the other. Yeah, for sure. So um, I think attacks based on... You muted your device. Uh, current, you are I'm so muted. sorry. I got a call. I'm, I got a call. Can you bring me back up? I got a call. Okay. I'm so sorry. I got a call. All right. I wanted to hear from uh, my last caller in regards to his explanation, but unfortunately, he said he got a call, and once he came back, there was a ton of echoing. Uh, uh, looking in the comments, guess he didn't see that white man punch the black woman. <laughs> For you folks who have seen the full footage of what happened there in Montgomery, Alabama, yeah, it looked bad because the security guard not only was doing his job, but he was in full uniform. And I still do not understand why the first guy got into a fight with him. But it proceeded where the second guy comes in with a flying knee. And then for folks who are suggesting it's wrong to hit women over the head with chairs or beat on women, why did all of those women get involved in that fight? Why would they get off of the pontoon? And, and there were multiple videos showing that they got it. They engaged multiple times. So it wasn't like the women were cowering and trying to, why would they get involved in that? And that's not just in, point, in regards to the women that were there on Montgomery, Alabama. I'm just going to ask that question, period. If you are a female and you get involved in a fight with a man, he doesn't suddenly become stronger when he's beating your ass. He was stronger when you decided to hit him. It's not just on the man to realize he's stronger. It is also on you to realize he is stronger as well. I'm not going to attack somebody that's got 200 pounds on me. You're supposed to know that. But in this case, the women continue to engage, and it ended up costing them a little bit of bumps and bruises. In fact, from what I heard on the internet, one of the women showed up to a local hospital with a bruise on her face that looked the exact same image as a footprint. So she took a foot to the face. But point is, the women were in get the women were getting involved in that brawl over and over again. And by the way, when you see the security guard getting jumped, there are multiple men taking this one guy on, and the women decide to jump in and help the men where they have a huge advantage. So the women were clearly co-conspirators totally involved in this. I hate to see a woman sitting down getting hit over the head with a chair, but that woman, too, had engaged and jumped in the brawl. At the time she was seated, she was not in it. Somebody had sat her ass down, but she, too, got involved voluntarily. None of the women 
that were injured there that day were just totally innocent trying to get away and somebody caught up. They were engaging men and losing outright. All right, looking back to the box, we'll keep it moving. Electric Wolf 45. Good afternoon. Uh -huh. Friend of the program, always good to hear from Electric Wolf. If it lets you in, it looks like TikTok is kind of slow on that. Look at in the comments. The black guy was the cat. Wow. Uh, did you see where it was? Those dots have a history. Yeah, I've heard about that history. It's not good. Let me one forty-five. Democratic cities versus Republican cities. Talk to me. Uh, well, I just I'd rather live. I mean, I live in a de democratic city. It's a small town. I mean, it's El Paso, but um, taxes are high. We don't have anything to show for it. Local government. They're a bunch of corrupt people. Nah, nothing new. You just keep, so you just do your best. I'm asking you the same. I'm asking you the same question I've been asking others. What is it about big cities that keep voting Democrat? If the Democrats do not know how to run a city, why do Democratic mayors keep having success in big cities as opposed to Republicans? Crystal, thank you. I think I think it's just because people see the problems in big cities, like the crime that happens, all the monster crime, like like you you were saying right now about the mob in Chicago and everybody says, oh, but what, it's a black people. It's the, the color. That's the only difference. You you glorify violence anyway. I mean, look at the TV show, The Godfather. I thought it was a good movie, whatever. But you also glorify uh, black people with with drugs and everything. Look at Empire. Look at that snowfall. I mean, you still you glorify the criminal element. I mean, everybody does. I mean, okay. it, it just it, it's just what it is. I mean, it, is it sad? Yeah, I think so. I mean, because then but but they don't correlate the thing with the violence and the way they're voting. And I'm like, really, you don't see that you're voting for the same garbage. I mean, you have a guy coming out saying, oh, well, it's just these poor people. They don't have anything to do and they're bored. And, and then on the other hand, you have all these people ripping off a target, burning it down, stealing shit, everything else. And they're like, well, it's okay. It's just, well, you know, it's not the same thing. I'm like, well, it's the same people. It's the same yeah. criminals. So, it doesn't matter so the color. I, so You're so still a criminal. To, so then I have to ask if Democrats are leading to all this crime in the major cities, I mean, why won't they vote? Rep are we just are we to assume that most of the citizens in America's top largest cities are just dumb? Why won't they? It's not that they're dumb. They're willfully ignorant. They, they don't want to correlate the same thing. Like I said, they don't want to see that their policies are the one that's driving the crime. They just want to blame it on. It's because the Democratic Party is really good at deflecting. They're super well at deflecting. I, I, I'm fine with the I'm fine with criticizing the Democratic Party. But what I'm trying to figure out is why isn't the Republican Party able to figure out the formula and make themselves appeal more to larger city voters? We're talking like 50 years of this or more. I mean, we can yeah, blame the Democrats. We can, we can blame the Democrats for anything we want to blame them for. But at the end of the day, Republicans do not seem to be getting a foothold at all. And you know, it's not. A, and I agree with you. But the problem is that you, Republicans, have a boring message. Republicans have a bore. It's it's very boring. It's very hey, live on your own, do your own thing, leave everybody alone, law and order, follow the rules. It's very generic. It's very boring. But it works. The problem is that the people say, hey, look, they're going to give us money for this. The Democrats are going to do this. They're going to open parks. They're going to open museums. They're going to do this. And they never do it. They promise all sorts of stuff. But generic, generically, the, the Republican message is just very boring. It's just freedom. That's it. It's just think, leave, about what you just, think about what you just said. You said the Democrats promise they're going to give us money for this. They're going to open parks. Yeah. They're going to open museums. Are you suggesting that the Republicans do not offer people anything? Well, no. The, all they offer them is their rights. That's it. It's boring. They offer them their freedom. Like, hey, we want to make it easy to get a job. We want to make it easy for you to work, for you to walk to school, for you to learn in school, for you to learn the right things in school, to, uh, reading, writing, things like that. We yeah, want to do it right. Minute. But, but the thing is, it's boring. It, in regards to making it easier for you to get a job, that's where all the jobs are in the big cities. The liberals are making, I mean, there's plenty of jobs in big cities. So the liberals are doing, in fact, if you live in a small town, it is far harder for you to find employment than a big if city. If you're so living the in the city, are, yeah, yeah, the jobs are there in the big city, but are they paying anything? 
And the, and if they are paying anything, why are they paying you anything? Because your taxes are too high. Why? Because they have to have all these initiatives for all this all this uh, uh, crime that's going on and stuff like that to try to deter and defer and all this. And they're the ones causing the crime because they're the ones that are being lenient on it. Like, like I tell you, it, you, it's willful ignorance. You're deliberately avoiding the fact that you're causing all this uh, truancy, delinquency, all this crime, all these people that are that are just causing all this crime. But you're you're okay with it because you got a museum on Black Lives Matter in the middle of the street, and you have ten coffee houses that are okay. That's it. So why? I mean, so why if if but if you let's say you're correct and the Republican message is just boring. If you want people to vote for you, why not spruce up your message? Why continue like doing what, what you're what do you, well, what do you want you're Republicans to give you, up? You're admitting that the message is boring and it's not effective in big cities. So you continue doing it anyway? Well, what do you want them to do? What more what do Democrat Republicans have to do to give to people? What are they going to do? Oh, we're going to give you a gun with every vote. We're going we're, we're to give you question. a second amendment. No, but in regards to your question, what do what do Republicans people? Isn't that something that the Republican politicians should figure out? Well, yeah, I agree. But the thing is, what it's I'm not just because it's a boring message doesn't mean it's not a good one. The I'm problem is that, that we just I'm not saying it's not a good message. I'm saying it's ineffective. You're not. These cities continue to vote against you. It could be a good message, but it, it would be like trying to get you to join the military. Be yeah, all but, you can, but the cities are going to keep going. Be, but here's the point I'm making. At some point, you have to realize, I don't care how good you think your advertising is, if people are not showing up for your cause, you need to change the message. But like I tell you, why are we going to change our message? Your city's going to shit under Democratic rule. You still want to live in a, in a shithole of Democratic rule with all this crime. You know that it's the Democratic Party that's causing the crime, their policies, and you choose to live there. That's your problem. Live on. Move. I mean, hooray for you. But don't Here's don't the, bitch and say, well, it's because it's the Republicans are racist. That's why we have crime where we're at. No, it's your fault because you vote for the scumbags that you do. But here's, just, I'm, here's not saying, answer. I'm not saying to get the votes. You just asked the question, why should we care? It's, it's your area. Are you happy with President Biden as the current president? Shit, no, he's a scumbag. But that's that's I, I know I'm going to vote different. I mean, I'm not going to vote but, for him that, anyway. I didn't. But that is the time. answer. That is the answer to your question. When you say, "Why should we care?" It's your area. As long as you keep deliberately ignoring the big cities, we are going to keep swaying elections the way you don't want. Maybe you but need to part, go to those big cities and actually show that you don't care. But what 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 do you think Republicans are going to gain from New York? We're not going to win New York, but we don't need New York to Why? win. The problem Why is you're, you, you, New York. Why do you believe you can't win New York? That's cool. They're happy. They're they're happy with the trash they got. They're happy with all the problems and the crime and everything else. They're okay with that. So okay. So we'll lose New York. Oh well. But I don't want to hear New Yorkers that are conservative. Well, you know, it's not fair. Well, no, it's not fair. But you haven't done anything. You haven't. You haven't shown the correlation between Democrats and the crime that's there. And the people that are Democrats, they know. That it's the Democratic policies, but they're willing to live in the cesspool. So we're willing to lose New York. I don't give a shit if we lose New York in an yes, election. You, yes, you do. You do give a shit. That's why no, we don't. Moving. You don't have enough. You you keep saying you don't give a shit, but then when at the end of the time, when it comes to four years and it's time to choose a president, and you keep losing these electoral votes, you do care. We're not going to win. Uh, conservatives are not going to win an uh, electoral vote in New York, the New Why? York electoral vote. And we've already p put that into the soup. We've already cut. Uh, we've already lost New York, so we don't really care about New York because we already know New York's going to vote against their best interests. So who cares? It's in, in, the, in our electoral college count. We don't care. We've already taken New York off the table anyway because we know we're not going to get them. You know what thank I mean? God, I will say this. Thank God the liberals did not say the same thing about Georgia. They're not saying that about Texas. They're not saying that about Arizona. We continue well, to yeah. try. Hold on. You don't hear the liberals do not write off people. We continue to make effort year after year. 
Have you ever heard of the phrase a defeatist attitude? Yeah. Does that make sense as a politician to have a defeatist attitude and give up on huge segments of the population? It's not, a, but that's the thing. It's not really that huge of a segment. Like I said, you guys already know that you're failing in your policies, but you keep voting for it. And we, again, I tell you, we come in with an, with an, a regular idea, very boring, very generic, very vanilla. But the thing is, it's the right way to go, but you don't want to see it deliberately and you want to vote for garbage, go ahead. But again, don't compare New York to Georgia. I mean, there, Georgia, there was a bunch of uh, fraud in there too. But aside from that, Georgia's going to swing to the Republican. I think. You know, do I mean, you I, realize that do you realize that the state of Georgia did a county by county recount and said that the voted fraud, the widespread fraud didn't take place? What else can they do? The truth. Tell the truth. What is that? Uh, that it was fraud. I just don't believe it. I mean, like I said, I we, we all know there was fraud, but <laughs> I'm I'm fine with you not believing it. But if they can show they did a county by county recount, present the information in your response, I don't believe what you came back with. Well, uh, we'll <laughs> see. Like, like I said, we'll see because I haven't seen any of that information. But I'll look it up. But I don't think it's true. But um, they uh, did but a I was, county no, by just, county. They did it just like in Wisconsin. The Supreme Court ruled there is no widespread fraud. What else can they present to you that you, if you actually believe that fraud happened and I'm not going to accept any type of investigation, I'm always going to believe fraud happened, no matter who tells me otherwise, what else can they do? Eh, I don't know. That's going to be up for another discussion one of these days. But yeah, I'm, not, I'm out. I don't, I don't believe in putting Georgia and New York in the same place. Now, California and New York, I'm in. You can put those guys in the same place, but not Georgia. Well, now that we got two, we got two Democratic senators in Georgia and the governor of Georgia is pretty strong. Talking about Governor Kemp, but we do got two senators in that state. So you may not put those two states together. But at the end of the day, when it comes to running for president and there's an electoral college count, a win is a win. I don't care yeah. how much banjos they're playing or how many Confederate flags they're waving around. If they give their electoral votes to the Democrats, a win is a win, right? Yeah, but you've got to stop pigeonholing uh, Republicans and conservatives as far as banjos and, and, and Confederate flag, because that makes you look like a racist. Right. Come you on, correct. You are correct that I just pigeonholed the, the Republicans, but you just talked about Democrats wanting free shit. I mean, you pigeonholed the hell out of liberal cities, but you got me what I did. <laughs> my my part's true, but hey, I was gonna tell you real quick on that on that brawl that they had in Montgomery and stuff like that. That's what yeah. happens when you when you come to a small town and you bring your bullshit. It was a, it, I mean, I think it was a fantastic fight. I mean, I think it was great. I think whoever got punched deserved to get punched. You don't get in, like you said, you don't get involved when men are fighting. Women should not be involved. It's that simple. But equal rights and equal lefts. I mean, come on, they got involved and they got hit. Is it possible in the era of pronouns that maybe some of those white women decided to identify as a black man? I think they did. And the thing is, they got what they got coming to them. I mean, it's like I said, it doesn't matter. But see, these black people showed exactly what what the song means about try that in a small town. Try your bullshit racist stuff and look at what's going to happen to you. That's the perfect Jason Aldean video right there, too. It, it was I beautiful. Like it. I like it. We you came see my to point. an agreement. At, we came to an agreement at the end. Electric Wolf is always a pleasure. I got to move it on, man. Good talk. Have a good day. Absolute, absolute. All right. Looking in the comment section. Who's this hell? <laughs> Nightly, be kind to my guest. Said he's confused as hell. You guys are funny. No, try that in the big city. Uh, that is true too. Because, well, you know something. Montgomery is a big city, particularly in Alabama, but yeah, there are certain areas, like if they had did that in Chicago, those people may have died. So <laughs> you don't want to try what they tried in a really, really big city. I mean, you know, the area they were in was obviously quite diverse, but if you try that, say, downtown Chicago somewhere, it may not be enough cops to stop the ass whooping from taking somebody's life. Uh, looking in the comments... What have banjos ever done to you? No, I admit I was pigeonholed and talking about Confederate flags and banjos, but I was in a conversation 
that we were pigeonholed. And when I asked why do big cities tend to continue to vote Democrat, and I'm talking to someone who identifies as a right winger, conservative Republican, my beloved MAGA, oh, I'm going to hear some pigeonholing because the Republican Party has been doing dismal in terms of performance in America's biggest cities. The only way to defend the Republican Party is to pigeonhole your ass off. You're trying to explain why they have continued to not get the not get the attention of big city voters for half of a century. The only way to defend that without making the Republicans look awful is to pigeonhole the hell out of the voters in those cities. They want free shit. They continue voting for bad policies. They're too stupid. Or as he just stated in the last caller said, our po our our policies or our campaigning promises are just boring. They're just boring. So whatever the case may be, there is no denying that big city voters do not vote Republican. And that's what we're talking about. I'm going to go back to the box, tap the screen, get your boy up to 30,000 likes. Almost 800 of you folks in here. You could be anywhere you want to be on this app. I do appreciate you rolling with your boy. Program is and always will remain MAGA friendly. So appreciate you folks rolling with me. The purpose of the live stream, we're asking why do big cities tend to continue to vote for Democratic mayors? Republicans talking about how awful the cities are in. Top 10 cities in America. New York, Los Angeles, Chicago, Houston, Phoenix, Philadelphia, San Antonio, Texas, San Diego, California, Dallas, and Jacksonville, Florida. Out of those top 10 cities, not a single one has a Republican mayor. San Antonio, Texas has an independent. All the other nine have Democratic mayors. Out of the top 50 cities in this country, only nine, only nine have Republican mayors. Fort Worth, Texas, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, Fresno, California, Mesa, Arizona, Omaha, Nebraska, Virginia Beach, Virginia, Miami, Tulsa, and Bakersfield, California. Four, San Antonio, Honolulu, Las Vegas, and Colorado Springs are four cities are independent. 37 cities are Democrats. Out of the top 50, 37 of the top 50 cities in this country are ran by Democrat. Many of these cities have not seen a Republican or a Republican mayor in our lifetime. I was born and raised in Chicago. I don't remember a, a Republican mayor running the city of Chicago. And I was born in the early 70s. I don't remember one. So what is it about the Democrats that appeal to large cities? Is it what my last caller suggested, that the Republican message is just boring? That's what we're talking about. Looking in the comments, most crime-infested states come from Republic. Most crime-infested states come from Republican states. I think you mean cities. There is some validity to that because we hear about Chicago, but Memphis, St. Louis, Baton Rouge, New Orleans, these are some violent-ass cities. Jacksonville, Florida, Jackson, Jackson, Mississippi. Some violent ass cities. Sometimes it is a matter of find the highest ranking Democrat you can blame. What do you mean? What do I mean by that? Memphis, for instance, Democratic city, Republican state, would blame the mayor of Memphis. If for some reason, which is not likely to happen, but if for some reason the governor of Tennessee became a Democrat, then we'd also be blaming the governor for the crime that's happening in those very cities. When Biden became president, he suddenly became responsible for crime happening in inner cities. President Trump is even running on it. But when Trump was president, he was blaming crime on the mayors and the governors that were Democrats. So it, sometimes it's a matter of finding the highest ranking Democrat to blame and stop there. But if the Democrat, if the president is Democrat, then you can go all the way to the top. That's kind of what we're seeing because Trump never was responsible for crime rates. Biden and Obama are. Uh, looking in the comments, or better yet, going back to the box, North, John Northcutt. Good afternoon. Welcome to the program. A tale of two parties running American cities. What, John, good afternoon. Hey, how's it going? Uh, 
I, I appreciate your platform and your, your open-minded allowing people to talk on both sides. I, I think we all need to be more that way. Uh, first off, you mentioned a while, a uh, few back, uh, back a little bit that uh, there was like systematic corruption in, in the cities ran by the mobsters and, you know, gangs and stuff like that. Do you think that might well still organized. be going on? Yes, well organized. Yes. Do you think that might still be going on in, in the inner cities? Could that be a yeah. reason why those cities stay uh, Democrat? I don't think the mafia has any, I don't think the mafia is really, they used to be, but I don't think they're currently deeply involved with politics like they used to be. Like the mafia used to run unions and all of that. I don't think they're as involved because as we know, you have been almost eradicated in this country. Right. And yeah, I see what you're saying there as far as the, the mafia is concerned. I think the organized crime has kind of uh, tapered away from mafia and onto other organizations. But uh, yeah. also another possibility would be, you know, you're kind of uh, you're you base your political uh, views and opinions. A lot of people base them on their surroundings and who's around them. A lot of people have a hard time thinking for themselves. If you're constantly being heard, being told that it's it's the other guy you don't want the other guy look we're trying all these social programs but the other guys they don't want to do that and they keep blocking it they keep blocking those programs and they won't let us do them you don't want the other guy and it happens on both sides don't get me wrong but yeah i don't i don't disagree with what you're saying but the point i guess the, the counterpoint i would make is why can't republicans come to these cities and let them know what the democrats are telling you is is wrong as opposed to what my last caller suggested where the republicans have essentially said we don't give a damn about winning new york we've already written it off i, I don't think that's it i don't think that's the case what i think it is is the fact that uh these ma these major cities have been democratic for so long a lot of people don't like change and a lot of people are already set in their ways they don't want to to change and they don't want to say hey let's give the new guy a chance plus everyone around them is already set they're like hey we, we're democrats here you know we're republicans here we don't want to change that we we want to stay where we're at we don't want to change let's you know it, they're gonna they're gonna have because the administrations the local administrations in that in that area are saying we're trying we're doing all these programs but the other side is stopping us they're trying to do more of this stuff, but the other the other guy's stopping us. And so it's that it's that demographic in those areas that the majority of the people are already thinking this way, already being told that this is the way. Yeah, but so do you, do you so do, I mean, based on what you're saying, because we, we talked about what my last call a generalization or pigeonhole. Are you suggesting that American voters as a whole are just not very intelligent, that they're just going with what people are telling them, going with what the media or what Democrats are saying, and they're not wise enough to do their own homework and, you know, become a free thinker and think for themselves? I'm not saying that they're not capable of it, but what I'm saying is it's easier, especially in my generation. I'm 34. My generation is lazy. We don't do the homework. We don't do the research. We don't do that. A lot of people in my generation, we don't do that. I wasn't raised in a political family. My, my parents didn't sway me one way or the other. When, when Obama was voted in, we had had eight years of a Republican, and I was like, why is everyone around me so upset that a Democrat's, because I'm from Texas, you know, so why is everyone around me so upset that a Democrat's going to be in office? Let's give them a chance. Let's see what, I mean, what's the worst that could happen? What's the worst, you know, the thing that is going to come of this? I like, I had no opinion one way or the other. It wasn't until I got into the military and I got around a lot of other people, a lot of other thinkers. I got, I got friends on all sides. I don't, I, I have to vote Republican because that's just the party that that's closest to what I agree with, but I have views on both sides. I have views on both sides. I don't think that the so government. Let me, let me ask it to you this way. Let me ask it to you this way. If you were a Republican campaign organizer, let's say, for instance, somebody was running for mayor of a big city, one of these top 50 cities that had a history of voting for Democrats, what would you recommend? Give me some ideas that you might recommend that candidate do to talk to the public in that community so that they would consider voting Republican as opposed to Democrat. I think they need to get out more. They got to be more present. The problem is, is the funding. They don't like the other gentleman was trying to articulate. They don't want to waste money on places they don't think they can win, which I disagree with. 
I don't think that uh, that's a loser mentality. You're already you're already chalking that area up as a loss because elections are 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 won and lost. They start on the local level, locally. Right. And and if you got a local, you know, your local government is one way. That's where it it, it goes all the way up the board. It's won or lost locally. You start losing counties. So, so but, but think what you're saying. You started out by talking about the funding, and they don't want to spend money for areas they've already, they think they've already lost. So right. to some degree, you're kind of buying into what I stated. Whereas, if you're not paying a lot, you're not putting up a lot of funding, and you view this as an area you've already lost. At some point, it doesn't become an issue of the the voters voting Democrat because you know the Democrats are lying to them. They're voting Democrat because the Republicans are not showing up and showing them any attention. Right. And the and the opposition is telling them that, that y'all don't want to vote for them because they may hear what's going on in other places that that the opposition may think that they can win. So they go and they campaign there. They do that stuff. So they may hear of it, but then they get from the you know, their friends and everything else. And, and plus the the way we consume news nowadays, it, it is so like generalizing out of context that a lot of times you'll hear see clips and hear things and and you don't get the whole picture and they play it deliberately out of context to make it seem like that's what was actually said because perception is reality i learned that in the military perception's reality if you've been working your ass off all day and then the supervisor comes in the minute you sat down and but he didn't see you working now his perception's your reality because he perceives that you've been sitting there all day you know what I'm yeah. saying? So well, perception but think, is of, think about it this way. Think about it this way. We got folks like Beto O'Rourke, Stacey Abrams. They both lost. But think about if we did what you're suggesting the Republican Party do. Or we marriage or you know, to vote a different way and we don't even give the funny. Stacey Abrams has lost twice, but you see she keeps staying in the fight. Beto O'Rourke has lost, but he continues to stay in the fight. Why are Republicans not doing stuff like that? They're they're running in heavily Republican areas, right. losing, but continuing to get up and stay in the fight and gaining ground. Where are the Republicans that come out to our areas and talk to us? And even if they lose, they're willing to stay in the fight. Where are those people? Well, see, and that's that goes back to the perception, because the way I perceive it, they have been doing that, but the way you perceive it is they have. Give me been some names. That. Give me some names. You know what I mean? Because give me some names. Like, and I, I don't, I don't necessarily. Uh, the um, what was it? The the governor uh, in in Georgia. That was a that that was a tight race right there, wasn't it? Yeah, was governor tight... Kill. No, that wasn't tight. He beat Stacey Abrams pretty good. Yeah, but but. You know, but, they, but the governor of Georgia is not running in a Democratic area. The governor of Georgia was expected to win. That's a red state. Right. Yeah. And then, you know, it's just I think I think they need to, to get out of that loser mentality and, and get get more engaged. You know what I'm saying? Like, because I, I've gotten to where I won't even go to Austin, Texas anymore. I used to love going to Austin, Texas. My wife and I, we we're history nerds. We love we love history, you know, and. So we go and see all these historic places in Austin and everything. Like, I won't even go anymore, man. It's just, uh, it's turned into a total shithole there. There, there's just homeless people everywhere, and it's but just, man, let me let me say that I want to give want to say two things. I heard you said Austin turned into a shithole. I want to address that. But first of all, somebody in the comments, Matt's wife made a great point when I asked, "Give me some." Chris Christie is a perfect example of a Republican, even though MAGA does not like the guy now. But a Republican that went to a liberal area knew how to talk to the people and actually get a gubernatorial job. That's what we're talking about. People like that. Now yeah, you mentioned you you mentioned Austin being a shithole area. I want to point that out. That if you do want to change these areas and get folks to vote for you, calling huge areas shitholes is a turnoff to the people in those areas. You do realize yeah. that, right? Yeah, but I mean, they can see it for themselves, you know, and then the the local administration there, because Austin's blue and the, the local administration there is like, well, we're doing all this stuff. We're doing all this stuff. Meanwhile, I've got I've got contacts with with a lady that uh, set up a nonprofit up in Portland, Oregon. She lives in San Antonio. She flies back and forth. And basically it's a it's a housing project and they bring in uh, it, it's just little houses, little small efficiency houses. They bring in veterans and and 
thing, people like that to get them off the street, get them clean, get them drug tested, get them a job, get them bathed, haircut, everything. You know what I mean? She's tried to set that same thing up, and all of a sudden they won't let her. They stopped her. They, the, the, the government you, in that area stopped her. You, you can't. You're not going to get the will of the people by insulting the hell out of them. I could go to West Virginia or rural Alabama, point to towns that have no infrastructure, a hell of a lot of folks addicted to meth and call them shitholes all day long. You don't see the Republican Party calling any of these rural towns that have no money, no finances, maybe a dollar general is the only business in town. You don't hear them calling any of those areas shitholes because they know that's where their constituency is. So the point I'm trying to make is they're not calling these towns shitholes because they want to improve them. They're doing it as an insult to rile up their base because there's a hell of a lot of Republican shitholes out there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you're right. It, it, like, like I'm saying, it's on both sides. And I, I have a real hard time saying I, I, I'm not I don't go out and tell people I'm Republican. I have views on both sides. I think I'm more in the middle than anything. I kind of consider myself a constitutional moderate. I believe in what the Constitution has to say. And I but I, I see views on both sides. You know what I mean? Uh, abortion, that's not a cut and dry thing. The government shouldn't be telling women what they can and can't do with their body. But at the same time, birth control shouldn't be used as a uh, abortion shouldn't be used as a form of birth control. You know what I'm saying? That that's kind of. Listen, I'm I'm a I'm a man. You're a man. I cannot tell a woman what the hell to do with her. If I'm not going to yeah. help her take care of that kid, and we know damn well the Republicans are not big fans of food stamps, giving kids free lunch or any of that shit. If you're going to force the woman to have the child and then tell her too bad, so sad, she should have kept your legs closed. It's up to you to find a way. I can't get involved in that argument. I don't know if, if abortion should be used as birth control. You Maybe you make a good point. But I'm not going to deliberately force somebody into hardship because they're not doing things the way me or another Christian thought they should do. You don't see yeah. any issue with that? No, yeah, I do. Absolutely. You're, you're absolutely right. It, it, it's not my place. I don't I don't feel like it's my place to be to say that. You know, I, I, my stance is the government should have anything to do with it. It should be between a woman and her doctor. The government needs to be completely out of it. I, I don't think it should be used as a form of birth control like women repeatedly going because it's bad for their health. It's bad, you know, it's, it's bad for them mentally. From what I understand, you know, I'm just saying that I, it's not my place to tell them. I'm just, my, my view on it is I don't think they should use it as birth control. There's so many other methods and forms to use to so, do it before so that. even though you're not a fan of them using it so even though you're not a fan of them using it as birth control if you were a politician you would not ban or outlaw it no no and and okay the thing no and the thing is the thing is let's say you force a woman to 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 have that baby and they're like oh well they can just put it up for adoption bullshit that the adoption system is is trash there's so many kids and, and more kids are getting abused in the adoption system. It's trash. That's not a good outlet that you can't say you can just put it up for adoption. There's so many kids already in that system. That system is broken. All Don't right, put John. more in there. Hey, listen, I got to move it on. But, John, I totally agree with you on that last part. However, the difference we have here is that you're voting in people that are doing exactly what you're saying is wrong. You're voting in a party that wants to put kids in the exact predicament you're saying you disagree with. I got to move it on. Right. Go ahead. And there's and also, last, there's also, last comment there. I mean, you're right on that topic, but there's other topics as well. There's other, there's other issues as well. You know, that, that I agree. It, I'm not just voting on one topic. You know what I mean? I, and, and that's, and that's the right thing to do. But I just wanted to point that out because you often hear the Republican party talking about, we don't want folks doing the wrong thing by children. And these are the people that are going to be affected if you force women to carry babies to term and then do nothing to assist the child once it's born. You're affecting children. And Republican Party right. are against food stamps, uh, free lunch programs, all of that shit that would help children. Well, I've been, I mean, I, I, I've been on food stamps in my life. I mean, I'm in a good place now. But when I was growing up, I grew up dirt floor poor. I'm, I'm not exaggerating. And I was, I, when I, you know, I was on food stamps. I had a, I had a child at a very young age. Uh, you know, I, I, I utilize those programs that I don't feel like my locally where I'm at is very red and they're they're not opposed to, to giving those out uh, at my school that my children go to. They have free lunch uh, there. We, That's not your, we don't want your school. We want your politicians to be in favor. of. It. We need more than just right. your school. Well, I'm saying 
most schools in my area, even though it is red, I mean, all the schools in my area, even though that it is a red area, they all accept, they all offer free lunches and they, we all have food stamps here. I don't, I don't see, I didn't, I've never heard that the Republicans are against food stamps and they're against uh, lunches personally myself. You know what I'm saying? So it's gotten to a point where politics is, is so polarizing now and, and everybody's arguing back and forth. It, look, it's not me against you. It's not left against right. It's us Americans against them. Look, you're an American. I'm an American, right? But they want to label you as, you know, you're a black voter. Well, what difference does it make? You and I both think a lot alike. What difference does it make what your skin tone is? It, it, how does that affect your vote? How does your skin tone affect your vote? You know what I'm saying? I mean, culturally, maybe, but you and I, we're both Americans. We're both should be voting for what's best for us in, in this country. These people in government are representing us. Regardless of what side they're on, they're representing us. We need to get our people that we want to represent us in office. And a lot of people need to start doing the research like, like you do and somewhat like what I do. And I mean, I've gotten out of it recently. Not, not going to lie. I'm just, it's just, it, you got to take a break from it because it just it gets so mentally exhausting. I get it. You know? I get it. It, yeah, it, can, it can get to be depressing. But, John, I do got to move it on. Appreciate yes, you sir, coming appreciate in. It. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. Moving on. Look, it's the audacity. Do your research. SG, the audacity. I'm sorry, but your skin color does matter. Roosevelt. I totally agree with you. I don't want it to matter. I know a hell of a lot of folks, even on the right, does not want it to matter. But we certainly are not at any place in America where we can suggest skin color does not matter. I just did a post earlier today where six police officers, sheriff deputies down in the state of Mississippi, one of them received a phone call from a neighbor. One of the cops received a phone call from his neighbor alerting him that some African-American gentlemen had had began staying in a house on the block. The cop picked up the phone, text five other cops and asked them, are you ready to go on a mission? They broke into the home where the, African, the two African-American gentlemen were, sexually assaulted one of them with a sex toy, put a pistol in the mouth of the other one, blew his jaw off. Planted methamphetamines on the two gentlemen and charged them with a felony. Those six officers have been caught, pled guilty. This happened in January of this year. You haven't heard Black Lives Matter or anything getting involved in this one. But they did plead guilty. They're facing a hell of a lot of time in prison. But it, I posted this on my page. I had somebody in the comments ask, well, can I see the rest of the story? I don't trust the media. They pled guilty to using a dildo on somebody. And you got somebody saying, I need to hear the rest of the story first. I don't trust the media. They actually play guilty to this. That is just shows how difficult it is to hold bad cops accountable. If I'm ever in trouble, I need somebody like that. I need to hear the rest of the story. Even though this guy is laying on the ground and his butt was open wider than a shark's mouth, maybe the cops were justified. We need to see the rest of the story, even though they've played guilty. Anyhow, going back to the actual topic, Democratic cities versus Republican cities. You hear a lot of Republicans suggesting Democratic liberal cities are ran improperly, hell of a lot of crime there. As I stated earlier in the program, generally for criminal crime to flourish, you need three different issues. You need a criminal or an assailant. You need opportunity. There has to be something to cash in on, whether it's stealing catalytic converters or taking the life of your opposition. And of course, you need victims. Where is there an abundance of these three items? Criminals, opportunity, victims. Big cities. You're not going to go around a rural area stealing catalytic converters. There's not as many cars there. There's You, you can't take somebody's purse if nobody's walking down the street. So first of all, let's be clear, big cities are where the opportunities for criminals exist. So why is it in liberal big cities? Well, as I pointed out, the top 10 cities in America, with the exception of San Antonio having an independent mayor, top 10 cities are all liberal. Top 50 cities in this country, only nine of the top 50 cities 
have a Republican mayor. You got to go down to the 15th largest city before you even find one. Top 14 cities, there's not a single Republican mayor. So when you talk about crime in liberal cities, and you talk about the fact that you need you need opportunity and you need victims for crime to even take place, there's just there's not a lot of big cities ran by Republicans. So that's why there's more crime in liberal cities because shit, all of the liberal cities are where the people are. That's not to say that maybe some of the policies being implemented by liberals may not be promoting crime. But you can't compare it to Republican cities because there's so few out there. Leading to the question, why the hell do big cities seem to avoid the Republican Party like the plague? You can say what you want about Democratic policies suck and it makes big cities awful. But for some reason, and we're talking 50 years or more, big cities have continued to vote Democrat. So we're not just talking about, you know, Generation Z or whatever the hell we're on now is a generation that doesn't do its homework. They're not smart. They're lazy. This has been happening for about almost three continuous generations now. As I stated, I don't remember a Democratic or better yet a Republican mayor in Chicago. I don't remember them having one in my entire lifetime. Are we to assume all of the Chicago voters since the 1970s have just been lazy, listening to the media and too stupid to think on their own? Is that the explanation for all of America's top largest cities? Is that the entire population is just too stupid to think on their own? Or is it possible the Republicans are not offering a diverse community what they find favorable? That's what we're talking about. Going back, oh my God, Rick. In the comments, Trump face down in a ditch 2024. That's an awful statement. That's the kind of shit that can get you blocked, man. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Didn't we just have somebody in the state of Utah yesterday wanted to take out the current commander-in-chief, lost his life, gave his life up to the damn cause? Don't do that on our side. There's a hell of a lot of Republicans that have given their life to the Republican causes. We don't need more folks, even if they're liberal, to do that shit. We had a guy in Cincinnati supporting on the right side of the aisle, went to a federal office there in Cincinnati and lost his life. It doesn't help, and I know my beloved MAGA is not going to like hearing this, but it doesn't help when you got the former commander-in-chief criticizing the federal government so bad because he's making people want to go after the federal government. But yet, the guy in Utah got into a firefight with federal officers, and they, you're not going to win that fight. I mean, even David Koresh didn't win that fight, and he had a hell of a lot of weapons. You're not going to win that fight. But in Utah, another anti-Biden, anti-liberal voter lost his life for the cause. So I don't like those comments. Uh, Trump is threatening judges, which is a crime. Yes, it is, but he's doing it from a manner of having if you come after me, I'm going to come back after you. Well, who the hell are you talking about? Well, I'm actually talking about this cat. If the cat scratches me, I mean, you can make up any damn thing. So, I mean, that's how this country has often been. You hear African Americans accusing folks of racism. Well, there's always plausible deniability. I'm not racist. It means this. So, Trump has plausible deniability. He didn't name any names. So, right now, he's off the hook. Uh, looking in the comments, we'll keep it moving with Andy. Program. Good afternoon, Andy. Democratic cities versus Republican cities. What is it about Democratic cities that refuse to try a Republican mayor? Maybe they could do better. Um, Birmingham has yeah. the largest economy in the entire state, and it's blue. How are they going to do better? And rural states pass laws against you all the time to make it harder to do anything because they're scared of everything. That's what Fox News example. is. It is the fear machine. Give me an example of rural states passing laws against you out of fear. Um, you know, I live in a state where we have dry counties, right? They're afraid to even that's let no you drink. Alcohol. Yeah, there's yeah. no alcohol. 
Now, being from Chicago, I don't know what the hell a dry county is. Explain to me, does that mean like not on Sundays or you can't buy alcohol? How, do, how does that not work? What does it mean? Can't drink, you can't buy alcohol at all. Can't drink there, can't Ever. Open Ever. No bars, no clubs, nothing. No. How does that work in a free country? Um, we had blue laws for a long time, and there's certain things you can't buy here. I mean, lots of things here in the South are restricted or for a long time. But, the entire time but, was, but you your state, Alabama, Sunday. but Alabama, a state where they, you know, folks are suggesting they're patriots fighting for freedom, but you don't have the freedom in a, in a host of counties to even drink alcohol. No. Why did they do and that? Then the Bible Belt that they don't practice. So they're using, they're trying to use religion to prevent people from having a wee bit of the spirits. Yes. I a wee bit of anything. Wow. Look, I have decided Republicans are against fun of all sorts. Well, that's certainly. If you if you're talking because I never heard of I mean I've heard of the term but I've never been in I don't drink at all so it wouldn't matter to me anyway but I do believe so a they, person should have the right to drink but how does that how does that in freedom even end up in the same sentence that sounds like the Taliban it doesn't whoever said I was wrong bring your own self down here even the Jack Daniels plant in Tennessee is in a dry county they can make it but they can't sell it. <laughs> You know, and I'll tell you something in regards to dry counties and using religion to prevent people from having alcohol. One of the things I talk about all the time is you hear about AOC or you hear about the squad or you hear about Bernie Sanders and you hear about the far left. One of the things you don't hear about in this country, and certainly you won't hear it on right wing media, is the far right. There is a far right element in America. Folks on the right don't talk about it, but what you're talking about, dry counties, that is a far right policy, preventing people from having, you know, a drink or something. That's a far right policy. And I, yeah, it's, it goes against all of the, the tenets of freedom, in my opinion. Nobody in that county is trying to vote against that. They don't, I mean, they don't think about it. They they live in the country. Most of them break the law. They make moon and all kinds of things. They all break the law. They act like they're all lily white. They're not. Um... <laughs> And on top of that, Mr. Um, women shouldn't use it as a birth control. They don't. It is the lowest it has ever been in history since it's been passed. That's why it was so shocking that they passed that. And on top of that, Republicans tried to, right after that, get rid of birth control. So they want to turn us into incubators. It's not about saving babies' lives. Don't kid yourself. Alabama's laws are so strict that they only left an exception for the mother. Um, if you have a baby that's, you know, born and its skull doesn't come around its brain and it's not going to develop right, too bad. You have to have that kid. Yeah. There's you know, no such thing as a medical abortion anymore. So no, they, they these things yeah. Thank you. that you he was talking about. Go ahead. Those things he was talking about. Like, there are no late-term abortions except unless the child is incompatible with life, meaning it will not live outside the womb. So all these... Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't buy into that. I think even Ron, have, I'm over yeah, it. Even, so, even Ron DeSantis talked about children being, abo being aborted like 30 days after delivery. That stuff is not happening. I, yeah, that is some ridiculous talk that women are giving birth and then coming back to the hospital when the kid is like a one month old and saying, I want to abort it. I don't know where that even came from, but I have never heard of a single case one of somebody performing a baby, an abortion on a child that had no umbil umbilical cord. The cord's already been cut, and you're telling me this kid can be aborted. That just does not happen. There was one criminal doctor up north, I can't remember where, and he did some late term abortions. He was like, you know, like the, the mercy nurse. You know, you always have one in the profession that's not right. So that's, you know, he, um, it's him and it's only that one doctor and he got arrested. So yeah. to continue for them to keep propagating that lie just irritates me to no end. 
Alabama was so bad, you couldn't even buy groceries on Sunday, nothing. That don't work on Sunday? Mm -mm. And corporations yeah, walked them on into I the future. <laughs> yeah, I know what that's like. I used to live in Australia for a period of time, and I know what it's like to live in a town where everything closed. And Australia is not very religious, but it is like America used to be where things are closed on the weekends, give you time to be with your family, which there's some good in it. But if you're doing it from a religious standpoint, that is censoring freedom. Because in the comments, people were saying, well, you can drink in a dry county, you just can't buy it. Well, it's still stifling no, capitalism. You get caught, you're in a, in a world of hurt. Because I have a, um, and look, they know when a stranger comes to the small town too. When my wait, BMW wait, wait, crosses, what the, do you mean when you say you get caught? So you can't even drink legally in a small town, or in well, a, not in, in a, public, a, not in public. Okay, what about if you're sitting on your porch having a beer? I, I don't think that's against the law, but I mean, because you're on your own property or whatever. But they're, they're I mean, it, for them to talk about freedom. You know, they took away, and, and abortion really is women's health care because they gave us the morning after pill. You know, we have birth control. Most of them are like the abortion rate was at a, at a minimal. But what they're going to do in Alabama is they're going to have a bunch of women who miscarriage who are going to pass away. So, wow. and in the new Alabama Constitution, there's the sanctity of life clause, and it says men have equal, men have rights under God. But do you know where it doesn't say? It doesn't say women have rights. And any of you that don't believe me, pull up the Alabama 2022 Constitution. They were only supposed to change the racist language in it, and they changed everything. So if you could, this is something you often hear from folks on the right. We didn't ban abortion. We just gave it back to the state. So let me ask you this. If you are in, say, um, Mobile, Alabama, you're not at the bottom. If you want to terminate a child as a Mobile, Alabama resident, where is the nearest place in America you do you believe you could go to terminate Three a child? Away. Where? Three states away. What state is that? Um, whatever is above Tennessee, whatever blue states are above Tennessee. Well, Kentucky is above Tennessee, oh, and that ain't going to help. Illinois? Well, that, yeah. Yeah. Wow, because Indiana is not very friendly either. Wow, that's a mm -mm. long way from from uh, Mobile, Alabama. That would be a well, long and, way. And this is my biggest thing. They talk about freedom, but everything is legal in Vegas. And yeah. look at uh, and, and they talk about oh, I am pro life. That's why you can't have an abortion. But by God, don't take my gun from me, and don't put any restrictions on me at all. Even though the Constitution does not say what they think it does. Now um, I want to I want to give I want you to you, you give me what you think because I don't know where to go with this. But in the comments, this is obviously directed towards you. Jacob Cross says, "I grew up in a dry county. This chick doesn't know what she's talking about." I, I would like for him to elaborate, but he's suggesting that what you're saying about dry counties is not true. You cannot buy alcohol there. You cannot drink alcohol in a public place at all. You get caught with an open bottle of alcohol in your car, you're going to jail. I don't care what he said. Right. So and it was state to, laws are different to each state too. So it could be, you know, yeah, it yeah. could be and and county to county and city to city. You can't make a blanket statement like that unless you've been to there. Yeah, so, I will just say this: what is in dry count is whether you can drink, you can buy these little different uh, variations of. It. Fact is, it is a loss of freedom compared to say somewhere like in Chicago, where you can buy and drink whatever the hell you want. Because folks in the South are often bragging about how free they are. If you're in a dry no, county, you are missing some freedoms, no matter how you phrase it. And if you're pro Second Amendment. And pro life, you're just pro birth. Mm. Yeah, we talked about that with the last call. I do because agree with that. If they're so religious, why are they afraid to go meet their maker? <laughs> Didn't God say turn the other cheek? I could have swore the Bible said when somebody hurt you to turn the other cheek. And and you know, you're supposed to be happy to go meet your maker. Not stick God God wants me to defend myself. Tell me where it says that in the Bible. I'm not no religious, so I can't even. Yeah, I can't even speak on it. Oh, I'm not I either. Think, but I had to learn it so that I could deal with these people. 
Well, yeah, you're down in the thick of it. I got to move it on, but you know how we do. Appreciate you coming. Thank in. you. Peace. Absolutely a pleasure. All right. I wanted to point that out because I see folks in the comments coming with different corrections, such as you can drink in a dry county, you just can't buy it, or you can have a beer, but not liquor. And things. Fact is, no matter how you phrase what you can and cannot do in a dry county, you are missing freedoms. It just depends on how many of them are you missing. If you can have beer but not liquor, then you don't have the freedom to drink liquor. If you can buy but you can't sell it, then you don't have the freedom to open up a liquor store. You're missing freedoms in a part of America where the people are most known, most known to brag about how free they are. That is the point I'm trying to make. In the comments, folks are talking about so move or don't go to a dry county. Well, shit, if that's the case, quit complaining about Second Amendment laws. Don't go to a pro or a gun area. I'm just pointing out that freedom does not change its definition because you don't like the freedom. If you're in favor of dry counties or limiting alcohol consumption for some biblical reason, then you're not pro-freedom, period. You can give whatever reason you want to give, but you can't walk around talking about how much you're in favor of freedom when you're limiting the rights and freedoms of somebody else based on a law that you believe coincides with the Bible. It is that simple. Telling people to move away doesn't mean it makes the area any more free. It just means you are stuck on your methods up to and including limiting freedoms. And as opposed to actually discussing that, You'd rather kick the people out of the area. That is right-wing ideology, far right. Now, I'm not talking about traditional conservatives or traditional Republicans. When I talk about you don't hear about the far right, that there, dry counties, that is far right ideology. And you won't hear them discuss dry counties too much on Fox News or OAN or Newsmax because there's probably a lot of folks in those areas that would like to have some liquor. So they're not going to bring it up. But they'll hammer the far left all day long. But that is a far right uh, mindset. Same thing with no exceptions in terms of pregnancy termination. That's far right ideology. And you can see based on the polls, even among Republicans, that they believe the Supreme Court has went too far to the right on abortion. That is far right ideology. You don't hear that too much. You don't hear Marjorie Taylor Greene, for instance, being called a far right politician. Certainly not like you would hear AOC, Elizabeth Warren, or Bernie Sanders, but she is. She's a far right politician. Look at it in the comments. Texas can't buy alcohol at certain times. Why? Other than religion. All of this stuff is based on Christianity. Extreme Christianity, by the way, because most Americans have some ties to Christianity, but in some areas it's extreme. That's extreme Christianity, such as Texas Governor Greg Abbott trying to pass a law where you have to display the Ten Commandments. It even got the size of how big the place car must be in all public schools. My beloved MAGA is going to support that. That's fine. But that is far right ideology, period. You only want your religion displayed. You don't want the Quran put up there. You only want the Ten Commandments. You can come up with reasons why you think it's beneficial for a child to read the Ten Commandments, which talks about adultery. I don't know why an elementary school child would need to know about not committing adultery if you don't want to shove sexuality down their throats. Why are you putting up a document that says thou shalt not commit adultery in an elementary school? I don't know how many third graders need to be told, don't cheat on your wife. I don't get it. So just want to point that out, but that is far right ideology, far right ideology. Looking in the comments, Logan Carson, 25, said this country was founded on God. It's founded on a hell of a lot of things that we found out that are not good. <laughs> I'm not here to suggest whether it was good to found the country on God or not, but it was also founded on a host of lies, such as separation of church and state. I agree with you. The country is founded on God. I personally believe it was it's very similar to having a loved one pass away and somebody tell you if you need anything call. They don't mean that. They're just saying that to console you during your time of grief. When this country stated on the 
Statue of Liberty, bring us your tired, your weary, your poor. Or in the Declaration of Independence, all men is equal. Or what you're talking about right now, founded on God, at the same time saying separation of church and state. Very similar to, if you need anything, call me. They didn't mean any of that shit. They said separation of church and state, and then they opened up a Bible and started writing laws. Just some great sounding slogans to indicate you're all about freedom when re in reality you don't mean any of that stuff. No one would deny that at the time of the Declaration of Independence, all men are created equal was a lie. No one would deny that even with the Statue of Liberty suggesting bring us your tired, your weary, your poor. Well, as long as they come legally, that's not on the Statue of Liberty. Just come the right way. You think you think about how big that crowd would have to be to put all of that shit around her head. Same thing with separation of church and state. As a astute viewer in the comments just said, founded on God. Nothing to do with separation of church and state. Uh, looking in the comments, founded on a religious belief. Nothing to do with God. It was founded on a religious belief that God is the supreme being. It does have something to do with God. I don't see Allah. Buddha, Jehovah, anywhere in there? It's even written on our money. <laughs> what do you mean? It has nothing to do with God. One nation under Allah? In Buddha we trust? I haven't seen those phrases. Maybe I'm missing out on something. Uh, as you guys know, it's always a pleasure talking to you folks. What do we do around this time? Want to get back to the box, but this is indeed a lunch break live. I didn't push you guys too hard to tap the screen. You got your boy up to 54,000. You know, I generally like to roll around 100,000, but I'm not going to hate on you folks today. We always enjoy ourselves. Have a good live, as always. We don't block Ben or Sense or anyone for their commentary. You don't have to agree with the host. You know I say that on every program. Uh, why the hat? <laughs> I see that in the comments. What do I say every time? I strongly believe truly believe conservatives, Republicans, and particularly MAGA do not get a fair shake in the media. So even though I lean left, the purpose of the hat is to let MAGA know you damn well can be assured you will always be allowed to speak here without any fear of being blocked, banned, or censored. You don't have to agree with the host. I'm not going to limit your time in any way. Freedom is about letting other folks speak. So I do believe in preserving the First Amendment anytime I'm having a conversation or engaging in dialogue with any of you folks. And what do I always say? I don't talk down to any of my guests. I let you speak. If you're not making any sense, you got to deal with my audience. But if you are, I'm willing to concede maybe you have the right point and yours truly do not. Uh, looking in the comments real quick. God wasn't included until World War I. Yeah, but it wasn't like you were going to open up a mosque in the late 1800s. Just because they didn't, in fact, that just shows how much stronger the religion was that after World War I, they decided to start putting it into actual wording on some of the documents. So the country was founded on God, but it got even stronger and stronger up to now. Well, let's start using it in some of our writings. Uh, looking in the comments. Roe was a privacy law. Well, Roe versus Wade is very similar to what they just did to the LGBT community. Fictional cases used to actually enact policy. I don't believe Roe versus Wade is based on anything in reality. The same thing with the, the suggestion that you shouldn't have to uh, create a website or whatever it was for a member of the LGBT community. When all of a sudden an individual came forward, like, I'm a heterosexual man. I don't know what the hell they're talking about. So the, the, the story was made up just to get the Supreme Court to rule on it. But there was no real individual trying to get a company to make a website that was an LG, a member of the LGBT community. There was nobody out there like that. They just presented a fictional case and got the courts to rule on a fictional case that applies factually to us all now particularly those that are in the LGBT community. Uh, real quick in the comments, that's why Texas is getting people to investigate miscarriages. Andy, that's frightening. And I've said that before, that banning abortion, even in the states, if you want to look at it from a state's rights situation, banning abortion has nothing positive coming down the road for women. 
obviously the unborn, yeah, a lot of kids will be born now that we're not going to be born. So it may turn out to be great for children that want to be alive. But for women, because now the embryo at conception is considered a life growing inside of you, you're going to find women being held accountable for, as she pointed out, miscarriages. Because if it's actually considered a life at conception, then any issue with that life could be murder. If you got a one-year-old sitting in the car next to you and you're smoking dope and the one-year-old gets a contact high and it causes that one-year-old some problems, you're going to be charged with neglect or you're going to be charged with endangering the child. Well, what if that child is still inside of you and you're doing drugs? Well, now because that child has the same rights inside of you as the one on the car seat, now all of a sudden if you're a drug, drug addicted mother, you're going to be potentially being charged with child crimes. What's the difference? You decide to go on a roller coaster or do something dangerous while you know you were pregnant? It's murder. Just like if you were put a six month old on a roller coaster next to you and the kid fell out. You shouldn't do that as a mother not to put a six month old on a damn roller coaster. Well, if you're pregnant and you were told you're pregnant, and you decide to go to an amusement park and at least you having a miscarriage, now you're potentially facing a murder charge. We could talk about it sounding like it's reaching or no, it's not going to happen like that. Well, if you deem an unborn as a life, granting an embryo all the rights and privileges as a walking, talking human being, then it is going to be like that. Every miscarriage now needs to be investigated. What happened? How did the kid die? Maybe the mom should be put up on charges. No different than if a one-year-old died. They're going to do autopsy. How did this kid, how did this kid die? Is the parents that fought a one-year-old don't normally just die? Same thing with a miscarriage. How did it happen? So yeah, expect women to now start facing charges. And I see in the comments, Brand <laughs> Brand X said it works for me. I don't know. I, I don't think this is good for women at all, but I do understand you folks that support um, limiting or completely banning abortion favor it. You want the women to be more responsible sexually, and if they're not, incarceration is fine. Also, in regards to holding women responsible, I talk about this all the time. There is politicians, particularly one in, I think it was South Carolina, where they're trying to make it law that a woman can face the death penalty for having an abortion. Let's say she's depressed that she got assaulted or she don't like the guy that impregnated her and she specifically takes drugs to terminate the pregnancy, confesses to it during a police interrogation or something like that. No different than if she took a live child and threw it out the window, she could face the death penalty. And that's what they want to do in South Carolina. There's an actual congressman that has stated that. that if, you know, if you take the life of the unborn, it's murder. You should qualify for the death penalty. Nothing good is coming down the pipe for women out of this. Nothing. If you're okay with it, you're okay with it. I see in the comments, Mick Man says awesome. <laughs> if she terminates the kid and they execute her, awesome. So women need to understand this. It ain't, it ain't going to pertain to a 50-year-old guy like myself, but, you know, I got a daughter. I wouldn't want her to, you know, really hate the guy that impregnated her or, you know, actually be the victim of sexual assault. And now she's also looking at a murder charge because she tried to get rid of the kid. That's like a double whammy. You got impregnated by somebody forcibly. And now because you tried to get rid of that, now they want to execute you too. Damn, that sounds bad. Damn, that's even if it even if it was irresponsible, let's take sexual assault out of it, because most abortions have nothing to do with sexual assault. A lot of women just simply find out they're pregnant by a guy who's been cheating on them, or you know, some cases maybe it's a black guy and this woman doesn't want to tell her family she got pregnant by a black guy. I don't think it does anybody justice by placing a woman on a gurney and talking about giving her a lethal injection or throwing her in prison for 20, 30 years. I don't, I think America's too, already too incarceration friendly. Uh, we already, I mean, as, as many people as we have incarcerated, what do you hear from the right? 
Liberals are too soft on crime. We need to start locking more people up. At what point do you start saying maybe the incarceration part is not working? How many more people you need to put in jail? Because I see in the comments, uh, Angel Fan says America is soft. We got more people incarcerated in America per capita and in sheer numbers than any other country on earth. And we're still talking about we're too soft. We need more of them locked up. At what point do you start wondering, maybe this isn't working? I don't know. I don't know. Look at in the comments. Dot says they need more slaves. That's why. Damn, I'd hate to think that that's the case. But we do know in this country there is a huge market for incarceration for profit is a real thing in this country. We know for folks who are incarcerated, everything's marked up from phone calls to simply a bar of soap. They are profiting off of inmates. I'm not saying jail or prison should be an easy place to be, but if you want to make a phone call to your loved ones, your loved ones should not have to pay $15 a minute to talk to you. Or if your loved ones decide to send you a few bucks, the city or the state should not take money that your loved ones are sending to make sure you can eat properly. They do all of that. All of that happens. There is a huge for-profit ring hovering around our penal institutions i'm not i'm not a fan of that i'm not going to call it slavery but you are making money off of people that cannot leave the environment they're there because they committed a bad act but that doesn't mean you should profit from their bad act if you want to punish them you know whether you want to make them bust rocks or sit in the damn room all day that's fine but you shouldn't financially profit from holding them there the incentive is obvious if i'm gonna make money with you being incarcerated, I'm going to favor laws to keep you in here longer. I'm making money off of you. Shit, I don't want to let you out. I don't want you to get better and return to society and become a better citizen. I want you in here. I'm making money. Horrible, horrible way it is. Uh, look at in the comments here. How much do prisoners make in factories license plates? I don't know what inmates earn, but I don't think hardly anybody makes more than... 30 cents an hour, no matter what job you do in there. Sweeping, cooking, plates, furniture, whatever. I don't think anybody's making more than maybe 30, 40 cents an hour. I think some of them can make as little as like five cents an hour or something like that. So it's very, very low. And nobody expects you to get rich while incarcerated. But understand that a hell of a lot of felons, in addition to being sentenced to prison, are often given huge amounts of restitution they have to pay to their victims. And even though you're only earning 5, 10, 15 cents per hour, they literally garnish that to pay your victims. So if you got a $50 restitution order against you and you're working all day for 10 cents an hour and they're garnishing that trying to pay off 50,000 bucks you owe or child support or whatever else you owe, just, they do that. They actually do that stuff. <laughs> it's horrible. It is fucking horrible. Uh, Ohio is $20 a month. Yeah. Think about that. You work 40 hours a week, so you're talking an average of 160 hours a month, full-time job, 160 hours a month, and you get $20 for that. I don't know what the hourly wage for that is, but if you're getting $20 for a combined 160 hours of labor, it's obviously a huge cent sign. Ain't no dollar behind any of that. You clearly are making very little per hour. Uh, the system is set up for failure. It, it definitely is. It definitely is. It's, just, it's not designed for you to get out and better your life. I mean, I, we can come up with a host of reasons why. The fact that a felony can affect you for 15, 20 years later. I mean, there's a host of reasons. The, yeah, the system is set up for you to do bad and hopefully return to prison. Six cents an hour in Maryland. Wow. Point sixty cents industry, fifteen cents while in school. Trades are about thirty-five cents an hour. Yeah, there you go. You folks know what's going on. No inmate in California that's working a prison industry job makes over a hundred and ten dollars a month, and that's probably a lot. Well, I guess it to some degree, with the exception of them restitution. I mean, what do you need money for in prison? I mean, you need some soups. You need some, you know, you're going to need some some hygiene products. All of that stuff's marked up, by the way. I heard ramen noodles even cost a dollar a pack or something like that in prison. I mean, everything in there. For folks who are making the lowest wages possible, they're charging them more for shit. Yeah, it's, it's set up for failure. There's, 
No denying that at all. I mean, you're going to pay this guy 15 cents, a, 15 cents an hour, but you want him to pay 10 times as much for a pack of ramen noodles. I mean, yeah. And then it leads to what you could easily predict. Black market items. I mean, people are going to be fighting over shit because you're paying them so low they can't afford it. You market it up so this stuff, the only way to get this stuff oftentimes is hustles and crimes and things like that behind bars. It's, yeah, it's it's a nasty, nasty system. TVs, Walkman, shoes, comments, are, yeah. <laughs> Rita says, dude, are you in jail? Um, now you're talking about somebody else, obviously, but I, you know, personally, I've never been arrested in my life, but I, I enjoy, you know, being educated on a host of subjects. And I watch a lot of convict videos and hear them give explanations because in this country, you know, we don't believe convicts. We believe in law enforcement and any convict is just trying to lie and get themselves out of their crime. Well, the good thing for law enforcement is that allows you to really exploit and abuse the hell out of them because no matter what they say you did, nobody's going to believe them. So I do watch and listen to a lot of their material because I don't believe cops or criminals are a hundred percent lying. No matter what side of you, there's some truth in there. And yeah, I believe they're paying ridiculous sums for toiletries, deodorant, ramen noodles, bag of chips. All of that shit costs way more than you would pay at a gas station, and they're making way less than you earn. It, yeah, it's uh -huh. it's ridiculous. Anyhow, folks, I do got to get back to work. It's always an honor talking to you folks. What do I say? You can be anywhere you want to be on this app. It's always a pleasure having you here with your boy. It's your boy, Tim, the handsome liberal, Monday through Friday. You enjoy civilized dialogue both sides of the aisle without any fear of being blocked, banned, or censored. You are in the right place. Follow the program. This is the backup profile, by the way. I'm going to point that out. This is the backup profile. The actual profile is titled The Handsome Liberal Spell Correctly. Here the final L is missing. Just wanted to give this profile a little activity. 600 plus of you in here still, 75,000 likes. So I do appreciate all that. But follow the program if you enjoy this. We will be on a regular profile tomorrow, The Handsome Liberal as well. Catch you later. I think I am.